Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick demonstration of how to use the FarmOS mapping features to map your farm. And again, this is an optional step for the uh, members of the Vermont Ver Vegetable and Berry Growers Association. Uh, but it is a useful thing to do, and it is kind of fun also, I think. So again, we earlier we went over adding your soil tests and adding your amendment records. And one of the things that I mentioned is while you're adding amendment records, you can type in your area name here that you're amending, and it will drop down a list of areas that you've already created, or it will let you create new ones. So I could say blueberry field. And that will actually create a new area in FarmOS. It won't map it for you, but it will be there uh, when you're ready. So let's look back at the input logs that Becky created earlier, just to demonstrate that. So we can see that earlier, Becky put in these area names when she was creating her amendment logs. And each one of these now is a record in FarmOS. So I can click through into, for example, Strawberry Field. I can click on that. And this will show me all the records that are attached or, or associated with this area. So if I scroll down, I can see here's that input log. If I go up here to the top menu, you'll see this link for areas. This is the main page for managing your areas in FarmOS. So over here on the right, we can see all of the ones that were created via the input logs. You can also create them manually here by going to add area. So I'll just demonstrate that really quick. So I'm gonna say this is called field C. So you just type in a name there and you give it a type. So the types are building, field, landmark, water, property, greenhouse, bed, and paddock. So for this one, I'm just gonna call it field. Uh, it doesn't really matter what type you put. It, what that will determine right now is what color it shows up as on the map. Um, and some other more specialized modules will integrate with these field types. For example, the grazing module will load in the paddock areas that you have. Uh, but for now, I'll just demonstrate the simple field. So then down here, you have a map that allows you to draw, uh, draw the field in. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and you can use your, for zooming, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or these buttons over here on the, on the left for zooming in and zooming out. And to draw, you will use these buttons down here on the bottom. So I'll go through each one of these really quick just to demonstrate what they do and how they work. So from left to right, we have draw a point, draw a line, draw a circle, draw a polygon. So those are the four main drawing tools. And then on the right, we've got some tools for modifying shapes. So we've got edit features, move features, and clear features. So the clear one is useful because this will just wipe out anything that you've drawn. So for example, if I wanna draw a point, I'll click on point, I'll click somewhere on the map. And then if I wanna remove that, I just hit this X over here and that'll remove that. Now note this will remove all features. So if I drew a bunch of points and hit the X, they would all be removed. So that's how you draw a point. A line is similar. You just start with one point and then click again to add another one. And you can keep going from there. So if you were to draw a fence, for example, you might want multiple points. When you're done, you just double click and that will complete the, the line for you. Mike, just quickly, can a line measure distance for you? Uh, it can't currently. Uh, we don't have that feature, but that is a feature that is on the roadmap. And so if you do have lines in here, when we add that, you'll be able to see what their distance is. But right now, the, the measurement only happens on polygons, so measuring the area of a shape. Great. Uh, so if you, if you need to, there's also a circle drawing feature where you basically just click in the center of the circle and then click on the outside, so you're basically just defining the radius of the circle there. But the one you'll probably use the most is this draw a polygon. So a polygon is very similar to a line, except that it's closed. So the shape that is formed will always connect back onto itself. So you can click around to different sides and different corners, and then when you're done, you double click, 
and you'll see it creates a nice closed shape there for you. So this is what you'll use for drawing out your, your areas, your fields, um, properties, buildings. Most of those things will, will be polygons. Uh, now there's some other tools here too that I mentioned, which in general you may, you may never use, but they're here if you need them. So the edit features button allows you to modify a shape that you've already created. So to do that, you click on that button and then you click on the shape itself. So you wanna click on the edge of a polygon. And then you'll see that we've got this little cursor here that traces around. This allows me to click and drag to change the shape at the vertices. If you click in the middle, you can add a vertice to, to change it that way. So that's one way to do it. The other, if you don't wanna mess around with that, you could just redraw your polygon to be the way you want it. Uh, similarly, there's a move polygon feature. So to do that, you click on the move features. Then you click on the, the actual polygon and you can move it around like that. Simple enough. Um, so I'm gonna clear that. Uh, two other things I wanna show on here, maybe three. Over here on the right, it'll show uh, a list of layers that are being displayed here. So there's a couple of options here. By default, the base layer is gonna be a Google hybrid, which means it's, it's the satellite imagery from Google along with um, road names and that kind of thing. That's what, it, that's what the hybrid is. We also have OpenStreetMap as, as an option. So that'll change it so that it's not a satellite, but it's more of just the, the street map, um, which for some cases might be helpful. Uh, so it's there as an option. We also, which I demonstrated earlier in the, in, uh, the nutrient management webinar, have uh, the NRCS soil survey layer. So if you turn this on, this will load in the overlay of uh, soil types on the map. So you can see what soil types you have. And you can look these codes up on the NRCS website or using the soil test feature in PharmOS, which I demonstrated earlier. Um, the other layers that are available are the uh, the farm, this farm areas layer, this will actually toggle on and off these gray boxes showing areas that you've already mapped on the farm. So that can be useful if you're, if you're zoomed in really far and you're trying to see where your previous area was that you drew so that you can line up with it or something like that. And then this top one, this will actually toggle on what you're currently drawing. So let me just put in a shape right now to demonstrate that. I'll put in another polygon. And I could toggle that on and off if I wanted to. So you may never need to use these, but they're there if you, if you want. Uh, the other two features we have are up here. We have this geolocate button. If you click this, this will actually attempt to look up your current location based on your IP address of your computer, and it will zoom to that uh, point on the map. So I'll try that right now. And in this one, in this case, it asks for permission to do that. So I can say allow, and then boom, there's my house. <laughs> That's where I am currently. So that's useful if, you're, if you are trying to map somewhere from somewhere that is not already mapped on the farm, but you are at that location, it can get you there a little bit quicker. Another option we have is this address search function. So I could say, um, let's see, uh, 477 stores road, we'll just say. And then this will drop down some other options here. and allow you to zoom to an address. So that can be useful too if you're just starting out and you need to get to an address quickly. But I'm going to now jump back to, jump back to where I was drawing that other feature before. And I'm just gonna reload this page to, to get back there quickly. So I'm gonna go back up here again and say field C and the area type is field. And now I'm gonna draw it for real. So I'm gonna zoom in and say, this is field C. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to come down and save that. And there we have it. This is our, our farm map. If I click on field C, it'll tell me what the calculated area of that field is. And if I have any records associated with it, it'll also show me a summary of that here. So I think we can see that with field B. There's that one input I created in the, in the previous section. So that's how you draw areas in FarmOS. Once you've got your list, you may want to organize it a little bit better too. So you can actually arrange these things hierarchically by clicking change next to the hierarchy. And then I could say, okay, well, here's my property, 30 black snake lane. I'm going to just put all of these areas under that property. That way, if I add another property in the future, I can organize those under that one. You can also use this to say that you have fields within a field or beds within a field. So the hierarchy just gives you another way of organizing things. So the other feature I want to show with mapping is this bed generator feature. So this is useful if you've got a farm that is divided up into beds. Uh, beds being um, a series of parallel uh, areas that you're planting into. So the way this works is you'll, you'll go to areas and then you'll click bed generator. And then the first step is to select the parent area. So you want to make sure you've got a field defined around where your beds will be. So in this case, that's field B. And when I click on that, it'll automatically populate this field on the left here. Then what we do is we say how many beds are in that field or how many areas we want to generate. So for this one, I'll just say 60. And then lastly, we enter an orientation. So the orientation is just an angle between zero and 360 that tells you what, what direction the beds are heading in, whether that be north, south, east, west, or somewhere in between. So for this one, I'll leave that set to zero and we'll see what that looks like. So there's two buttons at the bottom here, preview and generate. Always preview first, because this will show you on the map to the right what it looks like before you create those beds. You can always delete the beds after you create them, uh, but it's a lot easier to get it, try to get it right the first time. So that looks pretty good, actually, with an orientation of zero. But just to demonstrate how this orientation works, I'll change it to 15. Click preview again. And you can see they go off on an angle there. If I change it to 90, then they'll be going north-south. Uh, 180 will be... Uh, pretty much the same as zero. Um, the reason you might want to do 180 though is the numbering of the beds will be determined by the um, by the direction here. So if I if I leave this set to zero, it'll number them from top to bottom. So it'll be bed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from the top to bottom. If your beds are already numbered and you want to go from the bottom to top, set this to 180. And that's actually described here, I think, in this, um, uh, in this help text under here. So if you forget, just read that. So I'll set that back to zero. Um, down here, there's an option to say what type of area you want to create. So it should, it should default to bed. But if not, uh, you can come in here and select what you want. Uh, or I mean, if you want to create parallel areas of another kind. Uh, like uh, a field or if you have a number of greenhouses that are all in parallel and next to one another that might be useful. This tool is really just for for drawing a bunch of parallel areas automatically for you. So I'll leave that and then I'll click generate. And what it's doing is going through and creating a new area for each one and then we end up with this message 60 areas were generated. So now I can go back to my areas list. And if we zoom in on that field, there are our beds. And what's nice now is that each one is a separate area and it shows you what the calculated square footage is for each. So that's bed nine, here's bed 20, bed 31, bed 46. And that means that each one of these is a separate record in FarmOS. So you can click onto that and this is field B, bed 46, you can see it highlighted in orange right there, which means that you can then have records that are specific to that area. So here I could come up here and say, add, a, add an observation. 
and I could say that um, there was uh, caterpillar damage on this bed. If I save that, now that will be saved under this bed under observations down below. So again, FarmOS just gives you some tools to be able to enter all kinds of records and link them together so that you can find them again in the future. That's the goal.